Hi everyone, and welcome to Junosphere, where we learn about a whole sphere of topics and how they are interconnected, just as we are all interconnected. The purpose of this video is to enlighten and entertain you. Today, we're learning about those pesky little creatures known as gremlins. No, not the strange looking car from the 1970s, whose initial design was sketched on an air sickness bag during a flight. Instead, we are looking into the history of the troublemaking critters who interfered with World War I and World War II airplanes, as well as making a foray into Hollywood. The word gremlin comes from an old English word gremian, meaning to vex or to anger and from grim, meaning severe, and is also related to the German grammen, to grieve. So what's the true story about the identity, origin, and physical appearance of gremlins? One version states that gremlins are imaginary goblins, humorously blamed by the RAF in the Second World War for everything that went wrong in an aircraft or operation. The name was probably coined at first by the end of the First World War or in the 1920s and was apparently in use on RAF stations in India and the Middle East in the 1930s. Also, the name has been traced to when it first appeared in print in a publication titled the Aeroplane, April 10, 1929. One explanation claims that a gremlin was the goblin that came out of a Fremlin's beer bottle, Fremlin being a brewer in Kent, England, although there are numerous other suggested origins, some more palatable than others. There are many legends about their origin. One relates that they lived in hollow banks beside river pools in England and later moved to mountain crags. Gremlins are mythological mischievous spirits that are often depicted as mechanically oriented and devious. Although gremlins are imaginary little people whom no one has ever seen, they are nevertheless quite real to English and American aviators who had to put up with their pranks. They are devilish little imps who test the ability of overconfident pilots, clog oil and fuel lines, fog the windows, play merry-go-round on the compass, tamper with controls, drink the tank dry of gasoline, and the like. Gremlins made life anything but pleasant for sky pilots, who could manage very well without them and their mates, the Fifinellas, not to mention the Widgets, their youngsters, who hang around also at various times. An empty bottle of beer, called a Gremlin Cradle, is also believed to be a powerful charm against having them aboard a plane of any kind. They like altitude so much that they started sneaking rides in airplanes as soon as they were invented. Gremlins are said to have become active in World War I, when aviation was in its infancy. By the time World War II came around, the gremlins took to aviation seriously. Gremlins proper are said to operate only at relatively low levels. At high altitudes, the stratogremlins, called spandules, take over. These are much larger than their relatives and the ones blamed for putting ice on the wings. The fear of gremlins, however, became a serious menace. In order to combat gremlins, Walter Frisch of the United States originated in 1943 a little figure called Friendlin, a typically American little fellow, boyish in appearance. Sculptured in papier-mâché and bubbling with good luck, 
he was sold as an anti-gremlin mascot. Superstitious airmen generally believe that a passenger pigeon will keep them free from gremlins, since the pigeon is the gremlin's arch enemy. Today, airplanes are convenient vehicles for all air-minded supernatural beings. In the language and literature of folklore and superstition, Gremlins are not to be confused with a host of other imaginary beings who often inhabit man's world, for better or worse. For example, the leprechauns, little men who live where treasure is buried. Elves, tiny spirits in human form who inhabit bizarre, unfrequented places, but which have no souls. Kobolds, gnomes inhabiting deserted mines. Nereids, nymphs who live deep under the sea. Trolls, Scandinavian dwarves who live in caves by the sea. Brownies, wee brown men who haunt old farmhouses. Dryads, Greek and Roman maidens who live in trees. And fairies, banshees, pixies, goblins, and many others. The air wise gremlins had their counterparts in the Valkyrie of the Norse saga, who traveled swiftly on clouds. Gremlins have been described as being around six inches tall, with horns and black leather boots while others say that they are a cross between a rabbit, a fish, and a dog. They have also been described as little people, around one foot tall, who wear red jackets and green trousers. Or, they were believed to be about 12 to 20 inches high, and were a cross between an American jackrabbit and a bull terrier. They were sometimes seen wearing green trousers, a red jacket, spats, and a top hat, although the marine gremlin always had webbed feet and fins. Long before the days of aviation, the great-great-grandparents of 20th century gremlins were active. Having no aviators to pick on, they pestered everybody. For centuries, artists, have depicted evil spirits, more or less similar to gremlins, as we know them. They were responsible for human sufferings, accidents, and all manner of unpleasant and fatal happenings. So, in a way, the modern habit of blaming trouble on gremlins is a throwback to these early days when accidents were blamed on some outside cause rather than on one's own actions. The modern gremlin is an excellent example of bringing superstitious beliefs up to date, of streamlining an old motif. Typically, gremlins appear in connection with aircraft, but they also can appear in factories and offices. They could be described as modern, technologically aware, versions of brownies, domoviks, and other such spirits who like to play games with humans to keep them alert. The concept of gremlins being responsible for sabotaging aircraft is said to have originated in reports of misty, goblin-like spirits told by Royal Flying Corps pilots sent on dangerous missions during World War I. The term didn't enter public usage, however, until 1939, during World War II, when British pilots in India suffered numerous incidents of seeming sabotage and blamed gremlins. Since then, gremlins have been reported in relation to problems with both military and civilian aircraft all over the world. Gremlins are thought to have great knowledge of technology, engineering, 
meteorology, and aerodynamics. It has been said that they can bore holes into aircraft, sever fuel lines, bite cables, slash the wings of aircraft, and terrify pilots by suddenly appearing on the windscreen. The reason for their enmity is not clear, but it has been suggested that gremlins were once friendly towards humans, showing them how to use technology wisely. But when humans started to take the credit for their work, their relationship broke down. Gremlins came into being or came to our notice during the First World War when the Royal Navy found that certain things kept going wrong with the equipment. They were first named in 1922 when an RAF pilot called Le Bourget Airport for a weather check and was told, Gremlins sur la Manche, meaning gremlins over the channel, at which point his radio died. Despite their fondness for playing pranks and causing accidents, not all gremlins are thought to be dangerous. Some have been credited with helping pilots fly damaged aircraft to safety, and incidents have been recorded where gremlin voices have allegedly spoken to pilots and given them instructions to land, change course, or turn to avoid disaster. One of the most famous pilots who claimed he had been helped by gremlins was Charles Lindbergh when he made his historic solo flight across the Atlantic Ocean in 1927. In his book, The Spirit of St. Louis, 1953, Lindbergh says that around the ninth hour of his 33 and a half hour journey, when he became tired and run down, Gremlins appeared to give him instructions and reassure him of his safety. During the Second World War, gremlins grew in strength and cunning, acting in a characteristically annoying way and affecting just about everything they could to make trouble. Since they had no wings, they had to infiltrate whatever was moving. On airfields, they would live in underground burrows, ready to hop on board. They drank petrol and could cause havoc during flights by running from wing to wing, causing crews to bail out. They were always interested in the radio airwaves, where their interference caused great problems. Gremlins is also the name applied to the malevolent and destructive small creatures on which the films Gremlins, 1984, and Gremlins 2, The New Batch, in 1990, were based. Spawned from the more docile Mogwai, they create havoc wherever they go. Chris Columbus, who wrote the original screenplay, derived the basic idea for the first film from a nightmare in which he dreamed that his feet were being nibbled by mice. Steven Spielberg produced the movies where they appear similar to koala bears with long ears and teeth. These cinematic gremlins originally came from China where they were called the Mugwai and whatever you did, you should never ever get them wet, since this caused them to multiply. So we can see that there is a lot more to gremlins than what we might have imagined. Have you ever had any gremlin encounters? Let me know in the comments below. For more information on a variety of topics, please check out the growing library of videos on Junosphere. Please like, subscribe, comment, and share, and jingle that bell to receive notifications. I'm so appreciative of your support. Thanks for tuning in, and I invite you to tune into Junosphere again soon. Bye!